drives the ball in the air and a brilliant catch. Keep up with all the cricket action with the Test Match Special podcast. And he's hit it clean as a whistle back over the long leg boundary. Exclusive interviews and in-depth analysis on every series. That batting lineup can stand up with the best in the world of any country. And he goes and bowls to Butler. That must have gone surely. The Test Match Special podcast. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music. Radio. Podcasts. Hello, I'm Amy Canavan and welcome to another episode of the Scottish Football Podcast. This is the latest in our series of Premiership Preview episodes. As we look ahead to the new season, we've got handy little guides for each top flight team. And in this one, we're heading for Lanarkshire because we're going to be talking all things Motherwell. Swings it in, it's pretty and it's in! Well, Motherwell threw everybody forward and Jonathan Obika leads the charge in the celebrations. There's a chance for Jack Bailey's in, he pulls it back to Peter, he scores and up the post! Motherwell lead in eight minutes at Ibrox and Theo Bear's red hot run continues here. Oh, what a finish at Fort Park. Smash, back of the net, 1-1. What a finish. Shane Blaney, out of nothing. The Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Sports Scotland. Some decent sounds in there joining me to run through it all and look forward to the upcoming campaign is Motherwell legend and former captain Stephen Cregan and member of the Well Society, Derek Watson. Thanks very much for coming on, guys. How are we looking forward to the new campaign? I think uh, last season was probably one to forget, so uh, looking forward to getting back to Fir Park and uh, seeing what Stuart's got, got ahead of us for the season. You know, we've, we've added some some fresh faces, uh, really pleased with his signings so far and just excited to get to get back in about uh, the football, looking forward to it. It doesn't feel like it's ended, Stephen, does it? No, it doesn't. I think with the Euros going ahead, your mind's still in kind of football mode. You don't get a chance to switch off and then before you know it, Scotland are out of the Euros and, the, you know, the Premiership clubs are back in the pre-season training and it's just continued the whole way through. Last season was probably a little bit of a mixed bag. You know, when you consider some of the really good performances, the really good results, uh, but then you followed that up with the disappointments and the setbacks. Mother was a club that always said, you know, Derek may disagree, but safety first and foremost, stay away from trouble. If you could push for top six, then that would be great. If you can get yourself on a cup run and produce a couple of upsets, then that would be good as well. So that probably ticked all the boxes. However, when you go through a spell of 15 games where a win, there was major concerns that that could be the season. Our last season could have been the season where Motherwell slipped into the relegation playoff spots or even automatic relegation. So I think the players and the staff deserve a huge amount of credit to, to be able to turn that around and finish with a little bit of positivity. So hopefully that positivity from last season or whatever was left towards the end can can edge into this one. I like the positivity there. Less chat about Scotland at the Euros. <laughs> we should <laughs> just say that at the time of the recording, there is a lot of uncertainty around proposed investment in Motherwell. It's a developing story, and as we're recording this episode a little bit in advance of publication, the situation could have completely changed by the time this goes out. It's a complex issue too, so it is something that we'll return to in more depth at a later date. But for today, we're going to focus mainly on the matters on the pitch. So with that in mind, let's quickly recap the last campaign for the Steelmen. The season started with them topping their League Cup group, although they would go out in the second round to St Mirren. The league began brightly with a 1-1 draw at Dundee for wins over Hibs, Kilmarnock and Hearts. Little did they know though that that victory at Tyncastle on the 3rd of September though, that they wouldn't get another in their next 15 matches as Stephen alluded to. During that winless run, Stuart Kettlewell came under increasing pressure, notably after a 3-0 defeat away to Ross County, his former side. A result he described as one of the worst he's had. They finally got that loose victory with a 3-1 win over rock bottom side Livingston on the 30th of December and then got another six victories in the Premiership including a 2-1 win at Ibrox on their way to finishing ninth on 43 points. They went out of the Scottish Cup in the fifth round losing 2-1 to Championship Green at Morton at Capelo and unsurprisingly Theo Bear was their top goal scorer and player of the year. Derek how would you sum last season up 
Yeah, I, I hate to use this so cliche, you know, but it, it very much was a roller coaster season. And Stephen touched on that earlier. You know, the, the highs were high. That went away to Ibrox was, was brilliant. Vale picks it up ahead of Diamondi, out to Spittle, swings the cross, ball in the header! It's in! Motherwell are back in front! The second time in the game, they lead! And it's been headed home in the back post by Dan Casey! Absolutely incredible! The away supporters celebrate over on the far side and Rangers are behind again as Motherwell seek their first Ibrox League victory in 27 years. They're getting you know, closer fewest performances to now. towards the end of the season were a real highlight, but there were some real lows in there that you touched on. You know, the, the exit to Greenock Morton in the Cup was a, a real hard one to take. Uh, Stephen hit the nail on the head where, you know, Motherwell fans they probably don't expect too much, but we always expect a Cup run. Uh, it's been, you know, over 30 years since our last uh, victory in the, the Scottish Cup, and, and that's the one that fans really, really dream of. Uh, they want to see us getting back to Hamden. They want that big day out for the town and the community. Uh, so it's been, it's been up and down. You know, I remember speaking to the BBC in, in December last year after the Ross County game, and there was a lot of people calling for Stuart Kettlewell's head at the time. Yeah, things going from bad to worse for Motherwell as Ross County doubled their lead. Jan Danta with the goal, and it was a delightful effort as well. He picked up the scraps 20 yards from goal, picked his spot and sent a shot sailing beyond Liam Kelly. I, I says we had to stick by stick by Stuart. You know, uh, you could see that he, he had a philosophy there, that he, he was going to get the boys playing well. And, and he done that at times, you know, and uh, I think what you could see throughout that all is when, when times are going tough, you often see that the, the dressing room gets lost. It never felt like that at all. You know, it always felt like the players were right behind him. And Theo Bear's the perfect example of that. You know, he, he came in from St. Johnston. I remember reading the online comments, and it's, it's not always nice. It can't be nice for football players when they see, like, they see sign a player and everyone's asking why you've signed this guy. You know, he hasn't performed at other teams in the league. He scored on his debut at Dundee uh, away in the, the opening game of the season. Miller. Beautifully dinked ball out wide. Here's O'Donnell. Theo Bear's in the middle. Feed the bear and he will score. He only signed on Tuesday. He wasn't expected to start. But Theo Bear repays Stuart Kettlewell's faith in him with a fantastic finish. He just swept that ball home. He only scored one goal for St Johnston in his time in Persia. And after one game, he's equalled his tally for Motherwell. And he just seemed to kick on from there, you know. And it just shows you that, you know, it might not work out somewhere else for you, but if you've got the right environment and the right support around you, you can really thrive. You look at the you know, the two signings that brought in Zach Robinson and Stuparovic. They're young men, 22 and 23 years of age. They will have noticed the improvement of Theo Bear under Stuart Kettle. Well, that would have been a massive attraction. That would have been the reason they've come to think. There's a manager there who can make players better, can get them goals and potentially get them to move. And that's what Stuart will have sold to those two players. So there's an opportunity for someone else. I was watching you nod your head there, Stephen, when Derek was saying um, you know, that the dressing room wasn't lost. How much of a credit is that to Stuart Kettlewell and to his backroom staff that at times it was a very, very difficult season, but I don't think anyone, even during that run, and I know we had you commenting on it a lot, I don't think anyone did question that the players had you know, stopped back in the manager. How much credit does he deserve for being able to, to keep that group together? And I guess the club as well for sticking by Stuart Kettlewell, perhaps recognising that the players were still, were still back in that man. Well, it's interesting. I spoke to just someone within a senior position within the club, probably three or four games before the end of the season, and and mother over safe, and we spoke about that tough spell, and they said at no stage around the club on a daily basis was it doom and gloom. Previous managers, when results haven't been good, there's been a, it's been kind of demoralising. People have been quiet. People don't speak. But apparently, it was really upbeat, and that ha- that drive has to come from the manager. That has to come from coming in every day, being bright, being alive, being alert, getting the players around you, make, make a training interest and trying to always give the positivity, which is tough if you go 15 games without a win. So Stuart des- deserves a huge amount of credit because it's easy sometimes as a manager to go into your shell and sometimes as a player to feel sorry for yourself and let someone else take the flack. But he was putting his head above the parapet. He was the one driving them all the time. And you can see that with the number of late goals that they got. I mean, it was never ideal because you're always having to chase games and you're always having to throw caution to the wind. What probably frustrated the Motherwell fans at times was that when, when the club or when the team threw caution to the wind, they got after teams and they got goals. And someone thought, well, let me start that way. Let me try and be a bit braver that way. And it's easy to say as an ex-player and someone who's coached because you're a little bit cautious. You don't want to go behind in games. You don't want to always have to chase. But you think, what about going after someone? So it'll be interesting to see 
what Stuart's learned from himself over the past season. He's always somebody talks about taking his learnings and the positivities and everything. So will it be a different setup? Will it be a different style? Will there be a different approach? Maybe in some games, but I think that's a learning Stuart will take from it. But his positivity certainly kept everyone bubbling along. And again, Derek, Stephen sort of touches on it there, that there was that probably lack of consistency during that run, um, either side of it as well. But you're, you're sort of going... Why, why is why is it taking until the, the last sort of minute to, to get that push? How does Motherwell gain that consistency? And I know that's the, the sort of age-old question. And, you know, perhaps if we all had the answer to that, we'd all be football managers. But how does it, uh, how does it, the, the solid enough form of last season towards the end that, that survives Motherwell carry on into into the new campaign? I think what's really important, Amy, is, you know, we, we've got the, the new faces in quickly in this pre-season. That's something that we've probably not done well in the past. So we've added to the team and the, the players that we tend to be adding, one perfect example, I think, is, is Liam Gordon, who's came from St. Johnson. You know, it's it's players that know the league and they know the league well. You know, this guy's a, a double winner at, at Perth. You know, he's, he's very well high, highly regarded. Uh, him alongside players like Nicholson, who was coming into the team towards the end of the season. You know, Callum Slattery, who's coming back from injury. Uh, Lennon Miller, who is, is a dream to watch uh, in, in the middle of the park. I think these players really set us up for the, the new season well. We've kept the real core of the team, don't get me wrong. We've lost some really important players like Blair Spittle, who get a well-deserved move uh, over at Hearts, and we've, we've lost our captain, Liam Kelly. But I think keeping the core of the team and adding fresh faces to that early in pre-season is a, a really good start uh, and should stand us in good stead. As you said, we are uh, recording this episode a little bit in advance, so there is still the potential that moves may be coming and going, but... As it stands right now, Stephen, how do you look at that squad? I think um, Derek touched on it there. Blair Spittle and, and Liam Kelly's exit so was to be expected, no matter how harsh and, and hard that is still to deal with. But Derek does have that optimism that the, the core is still still sort of there. Well, it is at least right now. Yeah, it is. But when you check you know, the goals and the creativity that Blair Spittle had. Into the feet of Miller, a lovely turn away from McGregor. Lays it back now. Shot a goal! Blair Spittle! has the opener and what a goal it is lovely bit of play from Lennon Miller leaving Callum McGregor standing lays it square to Blair Spittle who just sweeps it beyond Joe Hart from the edge of the box we then say well someone has to step up and that's always been the case not just at Motherwell but at smaller clubs in the Premiership who continually lose their best players the management staff the recruitment team they have to go and try and find someone or something that just makes them a little bit different from the rest. It's the one thing I noticed last year about the Premiership. So many teams played in a similar style, a similar fashion. There was a lot of three five twos or three four threes. There was a lot of games where it was loggerheads, and you just looked for a little bit of quality, someone just to produce something out of nothing. And player spell could do that. Theo Bear could do that. Last season they lost Kevin Van Veen. Started last season they lost Mika Bereff just in January. Then Theo Bear stepped up. It's, it's very difficult to continually find that person on the budget that Stuart will be working under and the resources and having his hands tied at certain times. So that's the, that, that's the real challenge. But then Derek's right. The likes of Andy Halliday, who probably wasn't fully fit when he came in, Sam Nicholson coming in, Tom Sparrow coming in. There's real opportunities for players to go and show what they can do and, and, and go and produce something different. So that's the hope, that's the aim. Uh, there's a few uncertainties with New York players, not really too sure what they're going to bring. A little bit of uncertainty, a little bit unknown. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sure, Kate, well, named... Liam Gordon signing as massive. Derek's backed up there as well. Um, we've flung you up to McDermott Park a few times. What would you think that he will be bringing to uh, to this Motherwell defence, Stephen? Well, Derek will tell you himself, a real Achilles heel last season for Motherwell was defending corner kicks and was defending any kind of ball into the box. There was a little bit of uncertainty whether Liam Kelly threw a tough spell. I don't think we can get away from that. There was goals conceded that a goalkeeper of his quality probably shouldn't have been conceding and I think it had affected him a little bit. He wasn't too sure whether he'd come off his line. The defenders were looking to think, is he coming off his line? Is he not? A little bit of uncertainty. The one thing Liam Gordon will give you, he will head and kick anything that comes into his box. So that will have been Stuart's target uh, come towards the end of the season. Get someone in who we know is going to go and try and head the ball and be aggressive and be a leader and be dominant in that area. And that's exactly what Liam Gordon you know, has been renowned for at a time St. John's. And so hopefully that will just bring that little bit of stability, knowing you've always got that one presence in there who, first and foremost, wants to defend. And that just clears any doubt around everyone else. So I think that's why it's a clever sign. And Stuart's looked at it and thought, I need to plug that gap. 
So I think he'll be a good one. We're asking all clubs, Derek, what's the what's the one big change you would like to see this season? I imagine then it is defending corner kicks with Liam <laughs> Gordon, <laughs> heading away all balls. Yes, yeah, Stephen's hit the nail on the head with that. We were really, really poor defensively last season. Uh, I, I think we won't prove that this season. I think Liam's a great signing. I think uh, Dan Casey next to him is quite a, a solid centre-back. I think our best player last season, who often doesn't get the, the credit he deserves, is Paul McGinn. Uh, you know, I think he'll really, really kick on. So I think if we create a real strong uh, defence, we, we can drive forward from there. So yeah, if, if my big change would be, please start defending corners and free kicks coming into that box. Up the other end as well, we have seen some some forwards enter the free at, um, at Fur Park. Where's the excitement lying there? It's an interesting one because those that we've brought in at the, the top of the park, we still know uh, very little about. So it'll be interesting to, to see where we go with that. But yeah, I, I'm really hoping we can uh, we can kick on this season, uh, get some goals at the top of the park and, and just be a bit more confident and comfortable uh, defensively. And, and that's all we can ask for. You see, goal scoring wasn't a major issue, Ian, if you look at it. You know, Motherwell scored 56 goals last season. The problem was they considered 59. So clearly you want to try and maintain that attacking threat. I said it, losing Blair Spittle is difficult. He was, you know, such a creator, such good from set plays. If Theo Bear's not about, then who's going to fill the goals? But the style going forward seemed to be okay, you know, with regards to creativity and getting goals. But when you can sit, you know, consistently going behind, it can be so destroying. It's like, here we go again, and always having to come from behind. And it's great, you know, mentality and resilience and all that kind of stuff. But I think the fans would rather be ahead first and the other teams to come on and try and attack and muddle complain the ground attack. So clearly it's about getting the balance right. Stuart will have looked and thought, right, how can we maintain what we've got in an attacking sense? And how can we get better defensively? If we can get that balance right, there's going to be more of a chance we can push to the top six. Motherwell fans probably don't want us to talk about him too much and keep him on, under a little bit of a lower profile. But this is going to be a, a crucial season, Stephen, for, for Lennon Miller. Last season was really that, even though he broke through the, sort of the season before, but last season was his, um, I, I would say, the, the, the breakthrough season. How does, one, he improve two, Motherwell keep him, and three, is he the man that is going to perhaps have to fill some gaps that, that Blair Spittle, the very big gaps that Blair Spittle has left? Well, they certainly have a part to play in that. You know, I, I think there's possibly slightly different players, still both very effective in games, with different attributes that uh, bring to the team and, and how they play. But we have to remember, he's only 17. He turns 18 in August. So his first full campaign, I think he played 30-plus games, will do them a world of good. Physically, I still think there's a lot of development there, which he will know himself. Mentally, he's on the ball. Nothing seems to phase him. Whether you go to Ibrox or you go to Celtic Park or you go to Tynecastle or you go to Aberdeen, predominantly the big intimidating grounds, he's quite happy to take part in the game. So technically, he's very, very good. Physically, his game will develop as he goes on. And I think he's only going to get better. What level he can get to, I'm not so sure. I, I think it's unfair sometimes to compare him to previous players who have left the club or try and say he's, he's as good as him or he can go to there. Just allow him to flourish, allow him to grow, keep encouraging him. The manager showed great faith in him by putting him in and he's repaid that faith with some of his performances. So he will get better with maturity and hopefully his game will become rounded. I would say enjoy watching him play because I don't think he'll be here for the next four or five years. But again, it's a credit to the academy and the youth system. We can bring players through and Mother can bring players through and get them into the first seat. He has to be an inspiration for the younger ones below him to think, if he can do that at 16 and 17, why can I not do it? Well, Mother has been a club fame for bringing young players through and at times over the last two or three seasons it stalled a little bit. So hopefully they can get back to that. Nodding your head there, Derek. It's, um, it is just remarkable to think that he is still only 17 um, and I know we're not too dissimilar in age. It's a bit sickening though to hear that he's only 17, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Ste- Stephen's very composed there and says we, we shouldn't compare him to other players that are leaving. I, I'm very, very excited about Lennon uh, in, in the future of him but he's totally right you know you don't want to put too much pressure on, on such a young lad uh, he's, he's so composed on the ball you know he's, he's really really exciting to watch one of the questions you asked Amy was you know how do we keep him uh, Motherwell fans probably won't want to hear this but I don't think we, we need to worry about that too much you know Motherwell are very much a selling club if we could keep him for another season absolutely brilliant you know if he, if he leaves now uh, or if he, if he leaves at Christmas or during the, uh, the winter you, you have to wish them all the very best and, and hopefully that will also bring mother all some sort of financial reward as well that we can we can build on from there. That would be uh, very very welcomed. What uh, what constitutes a successful season this season, Derek? Yeah, I mean for me it's uh, t- top six in a, a cup run is is the ideal situation. Again, another thing that mother all fans won't want to hear. I think Stephen hit on it in his in his earlier remarks is you know staying up is first and foremost the most important thing that, that can happen for mother all. Uh, but I think you know we need to be ambitious. We need to be seeing ourselves as a top six club. We need to be pushing for that. 
And just one one of these years, hopefully, we'll get to a cup final and actually lift that trophy. How do they get this cup done, Stephen? This is uh, this is the age old question as well. But how do Motherwell finally get back to Hampton? Because it's over the last few years you're, you're seeing smaller clubs in Motherwell manage to to get there, have their big day out at Hampton. And I was at Capital last season at that time, and that was that was one of the sorest defeats I've ever felt and among any sort of set of fans because there was that optimism you looked at the, the, the run that they could have had still um, how how did they finally get their, their sales back to Mount Florida? I would love to give you a simple and straightforward answer Amy but I'm not too sure it's as simple and when. straightforward as that yeah well it is and it's win in a game but your cup games aren't about always particularly playing well and or being the favourites and being fluent simply find a way to win and last season down at Morton, it was as if they didn't roll the sleeves up, didn't do the dirty work, didn't do the hard yards that you have to do to match a team who are from the league below you. McGinn's run into trouble though, here's Oakley. Crawford trying to get up in support. He's the only other Morton player, he doesn't need him! He does not need him! George Oakley fires Morton into a two-goal lead! A beautifully taken strike! Low pass Liam Kelly into the bottom corner. And that's how you finish the Martin 2 Motherwell nil. I think that was the most disappointing thing. It was a real opportunity to go and do that. So we've spoke about the learnings and how people can get better. Moments like that have to stick with you and they have to hurt. And when you get that opportunity to go and play in a game that gives you an opportunity to progress in the cup, irrespective of who you're playing against, you have to think back to that feeling and say, I don't want to have that again. And you've got to make sure mentally and physically you're ready for anything that comes your way. Talking about it's easy. I used to do it as a player. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a cup fan. I wouldn't mind doing this. But when it comes to the crunch, you have to be ready to step up when the moment arrives. Is that something then that Motherwell perhaps don't do? Is it they don't know how to win ugly? Is that maybe fair? That's probably a little bit unfair, but it just seemed to be that in the two cup games where there was an opportunity for them to win, so Murray and Morton, you thought, well, you know, they've got to fancy their chances. They didn't step up for one reason or another, whether it's the pressure, whether it's the focus. I have no idea what it is, but I think that's a little bit unfair because they won games last year. Ugly. It wasn't always pretty. It wasn't always attractive. So I wouldn't label that at them, but I would say there has to be a, a sea change somewhere that when it comes to a cup game, you have to make sure you just find a way of getting through. I feel like I might know where this is going then, Derek, but general predictions for the season and one specific thing that you will think happen, do not say head to Hamden. I don't know if that will happen, so I'll certainly not say that, Amy. Uh, I would like to think that we can be pushing for top six. I know that's that's ambitious, especially from a club our size when you know other, other clubs are outspending us, certainly your, your big city clubs. But I think for Motherwell, we need to be pushing for top six. Uh, I, I think with the players that Stuart's brought in so far, and um, with the players that he's retained, you know that that's not uh, unachievable. Uh, and uh, one, one thing that I would say is, uh, Lennon Miller will be young player of the season if if we hang on to him. There's a big if in there as well. My many thanks goes to Stephen and to Derek for joining us, and thank you for listening. Don't forget, we'll have preview episodes dedicated to each Premiership team, so make sure you're across everything you need to know as we head into the new season. Subscribe to the Scottish Football Podcast on BBC Sounds and have push notifications turned on in your phone settings. Until next time, take care. For everything you need to know about your team this season, download the BBC Sport app. All the latest news, goal updates, stats and scores, and insight and analysis. Just select your club to get the biggest stories and best content at your fingertips. What a result. Download the BBC Sport app for everything you need to know about your team this season.